International Conference on Arts and Humanities. I think uh, today I am under uh, listening skills training. <laughs> the one who becomes chairperson, he has to listen it very carefully. And today I came across very new terms, new ideologies. So thank you very much all the presenters that you made me a good listener. I think that I was poor listener before. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kyung Mi Joo from Korea. Today I want to introduce the Buddhist reliquaries and relic deposit in Miruksa Temple in Debje. <coughs> it was newly excavated in perfect on this disturbed condition in January 2009. This relic deposit was buried in 639 during the reign of King Mu, the 13th king of Debje. Have you ever heard the name of Debje? <laughs> Uh, please look at the screens. Here, oh, I'm sorry. you can see a Baekje here, green one. Baekje was uh, one of three kingdoms in ancient Korea situated in the southwest part of the peninsula. After Buddhism was first transmitted to Baekje in 3, 384, many kings of Baekje worshipped it and built many temples. In recent archaeological excavations, many important new Buddhist artifacts of Baekje have been discovered around its last capital, Puyo. Here. Here. Miruksa temple, temple site is in Iksan. Here is Puyo, the land one, and here is Miruksa temple and pagoda in Iksan, south of Puyo. According to the his historical records, King Mu wanted to move the capital from Buyo to Iksan and build Mirza Temple for worshipping a Maitreya. In spite of its historical importance, Mirza Temple site had been ruined for a long time. The archaeological research of the site has begun uh, by the National Research Institute of Cultural Heritage of Korea in the late 1970s and they revealed the collapsed East Pagoda here. Uh, I'm sorry. Here the Pagoda, East Pagoda, and this is the West Pagoda uh, under reconstruction. Uh, this was rebuilt, this white one was rebuilt in 1993. The original plan of the Miruksa Temple was three temples here, the main and the east and the west. And the oldest one and the only remaining original structure of the temple was the West Pagoda. The West Pagoda in Miyamsa had been in the half collapsed and dangerous state for a long time. Thus, the reconstruction team of Korea started to dismantle it in 2002. During this dismantling process, they discovered a magnificent main relic deposit inside the central pillar of the pagoda in 2009. The pagoda has four gates on the first floor, uh, so everybody could come inside and look at the central pillar with their own eyes. You can inside and see this central pillar. The central pillar consists of three large square stones and the relic chamber was discovered the lower, lower stones. Nobody expected that the Buddhist reliquaries might have existed inside this pillar before the excavation, but now every visitor of the pagoda can recognize the location and presence of the Buddha's relic hidden in the pagoda. This was a very important rediscovery of a long forgotten Buddhist relic of the Baekje Kingdom. During the archaeological excavation and dismantling program of the pagoda, the relic deposit was found in the two spots. One, one is in the central pillar and the other is a hidden basement spot. 
The relic deposited in the deep basement was found in 2010, but it had been already robbed and left only several fragments in the soil. However, they found several terracotta Buddha's haircuts and two silver nails, which might be rela related to the worship of the court of Buddha's relic. The main Buddhist relicary set in shrining of Buddha's relic was deposited in the relic chamber when the second stone cover was opened. The last stone with relic chamber of the central pillar not only resembles the large stone relic casket in the shape, but also performed as a most outer relic casket of the main relic enshrinement in the religious function. In addition, it functioned as an architectural part of the pagoda. In the relic chamber, here's the relic chamber. In the relic chamber, they found a set of Buddhist reliquary with many royal votive objects. More than 9,900 9, artifacts were discovered inside the relic chamber, which is 25 centimeters long each side and 26 centimeters in depth. The placement of artifacts were arranged in an orderly and hierarchical way inside the limited space of the relic chamber. According to the brief excavation report, a gilt bronze reliquary for a Buddha here was placed on the top center and the gold inscription plate was laid beside. Under the reliquary, under the reliquary they found many votive objects with several layers. At the most bottom of the chamber, there was a thick glass plates and on the glass plates lay the six round flat um, bronze containers with a lid. The interspace over them are and these containers were filled with numerous glass bits and small votive objects. Such config configuration of the relic deposit might have been processed along with a known rituals of Buddhist relic techniques. The gold inscription plate was made of a thin gold pure gold sheet and inscribed on both sides. Each characters were engraved with a very sharp scissor and filled with lead pigments. According to the inscription, a queen of King Mo, who was a daughter of Satek Jokdo, built the pagoda and buried the Buddha's relic in 639. Interestingly enough, the Satek queen of King Mo had been unknown in the East Asian history before this excavation. The main reliquary set inside the stone casket consisted of three nested reliquaries. The first outer reliquary, you saw this reliquary uh, here. This is made of gilt bronze. And inside here, there was a small gold reliquary. And inside here, there was a glass butter. Uh, now it is broken. Considering the size of the innermost reliquary, the glass butter, the smallest grain of certain uncertain, uncertain uh, materials in the gold reliquary might be the one. I'm sorry. This is this might be the Buddha's relic, the only one Buddha's relic inside this nested reliquaries. Uh, so uh, total four nested reliquaries. Uh, were buried in this pagoda, uh, each made of glass, gold, and gilt bronze and stones. This arrangement was in very new style in Baekje Buddhist art, which might have been influenced by Chinese imperial Buddhist relic cult during the reign of Emperor Wandi in Su Dynasty. The most important one in outstanding, the original artistic style of Baekje are the two main metal reliquaries. Both show the most outstanding metal work techniques and the most sophisticated decorative style of art and craft of Baekje. The forms of them follow the older form of silver reliquaries of Pagungsa Pagoda site, which was buried in 577 in Baekje. This is Wangungsa Pagoda. Uh, such reliquary shape of an urn with a lid has been discovered only in Baekje until now, so the shape is one of the stylistic features of Baekje Buddhist art. Unlike the silver reliquary of Wangsa, with no, no decoration except on the incised lotus flower on the top of the lid here, 
but the reliquary of Gibson Pagoda has full of surface decorations. The Wang Chang silver reliquary was one of a set of Buddhist reliquaries during King Widok in Baekje. It consists of three containers, a gold water and a gold water and a silver urn and a bronze casket. And there was no glass water. The decorative style of Mimsa reliquaries are effectively represented by the main ornamental motifs such as lotus flowers, vines and leaves, and tiny rings and ring chains. Such complicated floral and vineyard design had not appeared in the earlier Bekje art. It might be related with new cultural influences from uh, foreign countries such as China or Persia. However, the use of densely incised short lines, here you can see the dense lines, short lines uh, in the leaves and vines, there's short lines. Uh, such lines were originated from traditional Baekje decorated art in Wangsa reliquaries and Buryong Wangsa metal works. Um, the other important new decorative style of them is related with the fashionable uses of new chasing tools, so called the fish rolls tools. Uh, a fish roll to, uh, tool makes a small tiny links here. And this is uh, one or two millimeters diameter. Uh, this tool was uh, originated from ancient Egypt and Near Eastern Asia. It was transmitted to East Asia and especially flourished during the Tang Dynasty in China. But the patterns in Middle Star Reliquary show the more sparse and free style than those of Tang China. It means that this reliquary set was made in original Baekje artistic style, which was created by craftsmen in Baekje who knew the who knew and integrate their own traditions and newly accepted tools and techniques from foreign cultures. The last and most important decorative style of Milk Relic Deposit is the beads filling up style. All reliquaries of Milk Relic Chamber was stuffed full of numerous glass beads in the original state. Such beads filling up style of Buddhist relic art has been excavated only in Milksa Pagoda of Baekje and Horiji Udun Pagoda, Japan in the early 8th century. Before this excavation, Milksa, uh, before this excavation such relic art was thought to be original to uh, ancient Japan. But we came to know that this was originally developed in Baekje and might have been transmitted to Japan. Um, and Restored heads of the relic chamber of Milksa Pagoda was votive objects. Mm -hmm. and, and many votive artifacts are very diverse, including numerous glass beads. Especially more than, uh, especially uh, of these votive objects, more than 800 uh, pearl beads were discovered inside the relic chamber. Pearls were not never produced in Baekje, therefore, they might have been imported from the Southeast Asian countries such as Vietnam or more Western countries such as Persia through the marriage road. According to the historical records, Baekje traded not only Tang China but also Funan and Korean in 7th century. Therefore, new techniques, decorative motifs, materials, and from the West might have been transmitted to Baekje through the marriage road at the time. The, uh, here, in conclusion, <laughs> here I briefly is examine the excavation of Yurza relic deposit and its cultural meanings. According to this excavation, we can be examine the unknown history of multifaceted cultural dimensions of Baekje as well as its international relationships of East Asian and Marian Silk Road in early 7th century. Thank you very much.